Welcome to Pitville Pump Room. This tour will take you on a journey through history, telling the story of Cheltenham's iconic Grade 1 listed Regency Pump Room through some of the characters who have featured in its fascinating story. Our story begins in 1800 with Joseph Pitt, a yeoman who had risen to become a solicitor, then wealthy banker and the MP for Cricklade in Wiltshire. He bought a considerable amount of land to the north of Cheltenham. It was used as farmland until the 1820s, when Pitt embarked on his vision of a new spa and town of Pittville. New spas were opening, drawing large numbers of visitors, and England was experiencing a housing building boom. By 1824, Pitt's vision was underway. Local architect John Forbes designed the pump room and estate layout, and the roads and landscaping fell to nurseryman John Ware. Today, May 4th, 1825, is a day that will be remembered, for today the foundation stone for the great pump room is laid. Just listen to the jubilation, see the crowds who have come in numbers to witness the splendour of this momentous ceremony. I believe today will be documented for generations to come as a most splendid occasion in the history of Chelsea. I stand on the site where my magnificent pump room will rise as the centrepiece for Pitville, the spa town I am creating. It will rival Cheltenham. Here I will build 500 houses, a park and a lake, a church. Visitors will come to take the waters to marvel at the magnificence of the pump room. To promenade in the park. John Forbes' design was for a two-storey building with a large central hall and an oval pump room. To the side was a small card room. Above, off the gallery, was a billiard room, a library and a reading room. Above the gallery was the dome, decorated with some of the finest plasterwork in Cheltenham. Outside, the building was surrounded on three sides by a colonnade of ionic columns. The design combined Greek and Roman architecture. It is thought the inspiration for the dome came from the Pantheon, the Temple of All Gods, in Rome. It took five years to build the pump room. From 1825, Pitt took a series of loans to fund the work, and by mid-1828 the building boom ended. It appears Pitt not only had financial problems, but also with its architect John Forbes. London architect John Clement Mead is thought to have completed the building in 1829 and to have been responsible for the internal decoration. The pump room opened on the 20th of July 1830, but neither Joseph Pitt nor his son attended. The pump room had cost around £40,000 to build. That's equivalent to almost £5 million in today's money. It started well, with influential patrons from Cheltenham Society subscribing to Take the Waters, promenade in the pleasure grounds, enjoying the bands playing most afternoons, public breakfasts, balls, evening galas with concerts and fireworks. The waters were said to have a pleasant saline taste, but the unfortunate effect taking the waters had was captured in cartoons from the time. Oh my dear, are you quite well? Were the waters not to your liking? I fear we must depart swiftly. By 1832, things were changing. The popularity of spas was declining. And by 1835, Henry Seymour, who had leased the building, had to find new ways to attract visitors and patrons to Pitville. So what is to be done? The people are no longer coming here to Pitville in their numbers and our attraction is waning. The Imperial and Montpellier spas in the town are becoming more popular. We hear comment that Pitville is too distant from the town and that the promenade with its shops and houses is the fashionable place to be seen. Pitville must have new attractions. Together with others, the Pitville Horticultural Association has been created and we will bring the beauty of flowers and plants to the pump room. The flower shows became a key part of Pitville's events. Increasingly adventurous special attractions followed between 1837 and 1840. 
These included Mr Blackmore, a tightrope walker who crossed the lake 40 feet above the water. Madame Rossini climbed and descended a rope to 50 feet and the Bellano family performed athletic feats and comic dances. The most exotic was the menagerie, which brought a surprise visitor to Pitville. Do my eyes see what I'm seeing? Am I suddenly unwell? I appear to be seeing an elephant. Yes, an elephant swimming in the lake. Time moved on. Tenant after tenant leased the building and tried different ways to make it profitable, but its decline continued. Joseph Pitt sank deeper into debt, and when he died in 1842, he owed almost £150,000. That's equivalent to over £17 million today. His property was sold until all that remained was the pump room and gardens and a debt of £10,800 owed to the County of Gloucester Bank. It offered to accept £5,400 if Cheltenham Borough Council purchased and preserved the building and gardens, which it did in 1890. In the 1920s and 1930s, instead of elegant balls and concerts, the pump room was increasingly used for badminton, roller skating and tennis. Major restoration work was carried out between 1937 and 1939 but was interrupted by the outbreak of the Second World War. The pump room was requisitioned for military use, and in spring 1942, the Americans arrived. My darling Jeannie, if you could see where I'm sitting as I write this letter home, you would not believe it. It's the fanciest place I think I've ever seen. It's so old. There sure isn't anything like this in Kentucky. It's called a pump room. In the olden days, people would come here to drink what they call spa water from underground. Apparently, they thought it was good for their health. It's kind of weird. Sure is beautiful, though. It has this massive dome on top, and it's so high. We're using the ground floor to store food, and they put us in the upstairs room where we're sleeping and living. Some of the locals sure aren't happy with us being here. Our trucks have had a few run-ins with the columns. Part of the fancy walkway at the front's been bricked up because we need more storage. But hey, that's war for you. The pump room was derequisitioned in 1946. Restoration began in 1949 and the Duke of Wellington officially reopened it in 1960. Today it is managed by the Cheltenham Trust which has revitalised it and brought it back to life as a vibrant go-to destination just as Pitt dreamed. The Outdoor Heritage Cafe opened in June 2020, providing a lifeline at the time when COVID-19 was restricting all our lives. It is now permanent, and we hope you will enjoy a visit there today. 2020 was an extraordinary year, as COVID-19 took hold and impacted on local communities, businesses and organisations worldwide. Restrictions were imposed, and how we lived our lives changed significantly. Recognising opportunities when government guidance stated that meeting outdoors socially was permitted, the Cheltenham Trust adapted and focused on its outdoor spaces and opened a new outdoor cafe at Pitville Pump Room. The community response to the new Heritage Cafe was immediate and overwhelmingly positive, described as a lifeline. And in less than a year, more than 252,000 customers visited and enjoyed 52,000 cups of coffee and 28,000 cakes. The implementation of a programme of music in the park brought the venue to life with live music, dancing and theatre for all to enjoy in the darkest of times, making it a popular destination and place to visit. The programme of free events continues and local communities and visitors are always welcome. The Heritage Cafe is now permanent and is open to visitors seven days a week. It continues to be a popular destination, attracting local residents and tourists to enjoy the venue both inside and out. The cafe, combined with a schedule of events and private hires, is helping to ensure the future sustainability of Pitville Pump Room so that its heritage and splendour can be enjoyed and protected. 
the Full Heritage Trail and the Art Deco style cafe will be open to visitors every day, with the exception of days where there is an event or hire. We look forward to welcoming you back to this wonderful, revitalised venue that we are so proud to showcase. We'll leave you with a tale about the three statues on top of the colonnade. The statues on top of the pump room depict the classical figures Asclepius, reputed to have performed miracle cures, Hygieia, who represents preventative medicine and long life, and Hippocrates, the father of medicine in Western culture. The statues would have signalled to visitors that the pump and its spa waters were dedicated to promoting health and well-being. It is said that the American GIs added a wooden baseball bat to the statue of Asclepius when they were stationed there during the Second World War. It's a nice story, but a myth. The statues had been removed as unsafe in 1938, and new interpretations were erected in 1965. We hope you have enjoyed your journey through the story of Pitville. <laughs>